Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has To Bead Alone, my weekly free workshop to make sure that every beader has company and creative things to work on. So today we are going to bead the small Chitorgar motif, which is a bit of fun because Chitorgar, the name comes from a fort, what is one of the biggest in India. And this motif is, well, small. So yeah. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> and I already see friendly faces popping up. Kata is here and Sandra is here and Jessica is here. And I hope that you can hear me. I hope that you can see me. And I hope that everyone is well as Kata says. And Sherry is here too and Anna is here. Wonderful. So today... You can watch the broadcast today, always. You can watch the broadcast from the Beading School Club and also from the Beading School Facebook page. It's always ha happening at 5 p.m. Central European time. And later the recording will stay online. We will even upload it to YouTube. There is a printable PDF file waiting for you at noonehastobeadalone.com. And today there is only a free version. There is no support version, just a free one. So thank you for your company and your creativity and enthusiasm. So you can download the PDF from noonehastobeadalone.com and you can open it on another device or you can print it and look into it. I will be also showing the illustrations on screen, but having the PDF, it just makes it a bit easier to follow. In the meanwhile, Antoinette joined and Honey and Teresa and Lutka, Faye, Liv, Sarah, Manuela, Mehtab, Natalie, Katya, Brit Marie, Belinda, Nancy, Lynn, and Alison. Welcome, ladies. And if you haven't heard your name, then it's because I don't see it. You need to enable my broadcasting program to see your name and see your face. All you need to do, you need to do it only if you are in the Beading School Club from the page. It's okay. It's working well. But if you are watching from the Beading School Club, then you might need to click the link at the, at the top of the video. And then I can see you and say that, hi, Marianne. And hi, Facebook user who's saying good day. And hi, Martina. Good to see you again. And Corinne is here also. So today we start our colorful, inspiring journey through the royal cities of India. Since we started Beading School Academy in September, then every two months we are exploring a different topic. And we are just opening the theme of India and the royal cities of India. And we are going to work together on the jewels of the Maharaja. So Beading School Academy students, most of you already have your boxes on the way traveling to you. Some of you even might have received it today. I already saw a picture posted in the club. And very important information that there are, we managed to put together some more fuchsia boxes. There are so much interest and thank you so much for your enthusiasm. Uh, it's not an easy job to increase the number of boxes, you know, because for example, this one, I counted it and we collected material for it from 15 different manufacturers. So it's not so easy to increase the numbers, but we managed to put together some more. And those of you who are already academy members on a yellow or turquoise level, and who let us know through an email to info at beadingschool.com that you're interested in an upgrade and you have already received an email and you have a bit of a head start and then there should be some left and if you didn't get in touch with us 
or if you want to sign up for the academy as an entirely new student, then tomorrow, 5 p.m. Central European time, so that's the same time as today, we will have a few, not many, but a few spots waiting for you. And thank you for your interest, ladies. And hi, Erika and Kirsten and Sue. And yeah, I'm just noticing, feel better, Brit Marie. I hope you will be well for the weekend. And Anne and Deb and Daniela and Cheryl and Katie made it, even if she missed the bus, as I hear, right? <laughs> and Sandra and Veronka. And one more Facebook user at the end. So let's start with Chitorgar. I'm going to show you my hand camera also. So this is the original that I have beaded. In fact, it is a necklace. Everything what I have used here, it comes from the Maharaja's Jewel Academy box. And this was one of the first designs that I put together for it, put together. I still need to attach the other part of the chain. So we are going to bead this part now. I really wanted to show you this wannabe necklace. So you can see that there are really lots of possibilities. Usually we use these little motifs for earrings or as a pendant, but you can even, even combine this little no one has to be the little motifs that we are working on week by week from the different elements and build a statement necklace. So I actually cut the golden chain that I received in the box in two, and I'm going to attach the other part here. And then I used some of the beautiful, transparent, pure ruby preciosa chatons for the focal part together with the pendant with some cubic zirconias. And I beaded two small chitragar motifs. Uh, two small chitargar motifs for the sides. And now I'm going to bead a third one and that's going to be for now half an earring and hopefully <laughs> eventually a full pair of earring. So, okay, sorry for accusing Katy for missing the bus. I misremembered the bus was late. It was not Katy. <laughs> so, <laughs> And hi, Gunnel and Christina also, and Mehtab. So let's see, what do you need for the small Chitorgar motif? So for the small Chitorgar, you will need for the uh, middle of the motif an eight millimeter round pearl. I used a Preciosa eight millimeter round pearl in ceramic gray, then, you will also need some four millimeter bicon beads. And I used again Preciosa, the amethyst opal that come in your box. I love this shade. The simple amethyst opal and the 2AB version too, they are just amazing. I wish there was a matte version, but they don't combine the matte effect with the, with the opals actually. That's a shame, I think. And then, you will also need some seed beads. So you need Miyuki Delica size 11s. And I used actually two different colors of the size 11s. My main color is the turquoise. And then I have a little bit accenting color, a matte gray shade in between the bicons. So if you use an accent color there, then you can put the focus on this circle of beads, the bicons and the Miyuki Delica in between. So you can decide where do you want to shift the focus on the pearl, on the bicons. It's up to you. 
and then you will also need some seed beads and you will need Miyuki round seed beads in size 15s and size 11s. Uh, it's not entirely terribly well visi uh, visible, but I used an accenting color for the round 15s, the magenta, and then my good old metallic bronze for the size 11s. Ladies, do you have any questions about the material or about the download? the old file that you need for the for today's class please let me know before we would start somebody says that her advent calendar arrived today she says hello erica and everyone my advent calendar arrived today i have been so excited looking at everything i almost forgot to come to no one has to be the lawn erica what a beautiful creation you brought today I'm super happy that you are happy and I'm really glad that you like today's team. Teresa says she's ready. She's always ready fast. So I hope everyone is doing well and we can start beating. Miriam made it today. I'm so happy to see you, Miriam. So before we start, I would also like to uh, to say thank you to Manuela and to Katja who volunteered today to proofread the tutorial. Thank you so much, ladies. Uh, please, fellow beaders, did you manage to download the tutorial? Honey says that she had some trouble. I tested the free version and it was all right. I mean, the, when you have to type in your first name and you have to type in your uh, in your uh, email address in the form, right at no one has to be the long.com. Please let me know if others succeeded. I hope so. I hope that you would already tell tell me <laughs> if there was a problem. Okay, lady said that it was okay. Okay, Connie, I think, uh, can you please write more about your problem or uh, try again one more time? And if you write more about it in the comments, then we might be able to help you. So, then I'm sorry, but if for the others it worked, then then I, I don't know. Somebody could please um, send the tutorial to Honey in a private message, maybe. Thank you, ladies. Login is not needed, no. And hi, Michelle. Michelle is here for the first time. So I also put, or maybe if it doesn't succeed, then we also have the tutorial on screen and it's an easy one, I promise. So we start with uh, an eight millimeter round pearl and we start with some Miyuki Delica 11 beads. First, we need to create this initial circle for the peyote bezel. We will bezel the pearl with peyote. We are very used to bezeling cabochons, I think, but from time to time we also bezel pearls and I actually love bezeling pearls. So I beat through the pearl and then I pick up 10 pieces of the Miyuki Delica. seven, eight, nine, ten. So as you maybe know, probably know, that uh, you are also experienced beaders usually here, for, an, uh, for bezeling an eight millimeter cabochon, we need 22 Miyuki Delicas in the initial circle. And that's exactly the number that we need for bezeling a per two, but we will start differently than we would for a cabochon. So we pick up 10 Miyuki Delica beads and then we bead through the pearl 
one more time. So then the 10 myokidelica beads will form a semicircle around the pearl. So that's part of this first circle that we uh, pick up for bezeling. Then we pick up 10 more myokidelica beads. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I hope I counted it right. 10 myokidelicas. And then we bead through the pearl from the same direction for a third time too. So when I pull my thread, then there are now two semicircles of 10 Miyuki Delica beads, one semicircle on either side of the pearl, and we need two more Delicas to make that 22 that we need for our bezel. So as you can see in step two, First, we bead through all of the Miyuki Delicas that we added in the first group of 10. I pull it and then I pick up one delica bead and then I bead through the second group of 10 beads too. So now I have 21. Now there is a little gap left at the top of my pearl between the first and the second group of 10. The little gap at the bottom, it disappeared because I, I added that one extra Miyuki Delica. Now I pick up the 22nd Miyuki Delica to complete my initial circle and I bead through a couple of beads. Yay! So this is how it looks like. Thank you, for Mariella, for your kindness, for sending it to Honey. And hi, Diane. <laughs> so in step three, we will bead just exactly in the same way when we are beading a Peyote bezel for a cabochon. So exiting, a Miyuki Delica in this base circle, I pick up a new Miyuki Delica bead, I skip one in the initial, initial circle, and I bead through the second one. And when I pull my thread, then I have two Delica beads next to each other. Then again, I pick up one, I skip one, and I bead through the next. And this way, I'm going to add 11 new Miyuki Delica beads all together. And that's how I bead all around the motif. Actually, as I said, like, I really like bezeling pearls for different reasons. One reason is that there is a choice that you can make that usually when you are bezeling a cabochon, then you have to add two rows of milky around 15 on the front. So the cabochon sits tightly where it is supposed to. But when you are bezeling a pearl, then since the bezel itself is attached to the pearl and it will not slide down, then it is enough to add one row of round 15 Miyuki seed beads and a bigger part of a pearl will stay visible without 
being covered up with seed beads. Also, by the way, since we use the same amount of Miyuki Delica beads in this first circle, then we would use for a bezel for a cabochon of the same size, then in most of the patterns where you start with a peyote bezel built around an eight millimeter chaton or an eight millimeter rivoli, then most of the time you can actually decide if you would like to have a pearl in the middle or if you would like to have a cabochon in the middle because the rest, it just works out the same. There are, of course, some exceptions when you can't just swap them, but most of the time it should be okay. In the meanwhile, Jennifer and Nancy joined us. Welcome, ladies. And now I am adding my last Miyuki Delica bead. And just as before, I skip a bead and bead through the second one. So my circle is complete. I have this zip shape all around. And then we call this stepping up. So I bead through the very first bead that I have added in this, this circle. So I'm exiting one of these beads. And hi, Lisa. We continue to the second page. And as you can see, we will add around 15 Miyuki seed beads into the gaps now. So I'm using my magenta color. And for me, this turquoise and a strong pink color combi combination, this is, this is really India for me. So that's why, that's why I chose this color combination for the whole theme that we are going to explore this month. So now I'm filling in the gaps with round 15 seed beads. I pick up one and then I bead through the next bead that is like an outside bead. And the little around 15, it will nicely nest in the gap. And hi, Donna. Beading all around, adding 11 pieces of round 15 seed beads. Cheryl says that she's using gold and yellow zest. So she expects, expects it will either be gorgeous <laughs> or boring. I'm really curious how it will end up. I really like zest. Mm, Kata says, I use the matte metallic blue slate AB Delica. It's turquoise and purple together. Very cool color. It's number 1063. Thank you for sharing that with us, Kata. Mm -hmm. Is anyone working with the new Pantone color, the Very Peri? Or was one week of Very Peri purple enough for you? <laughs> So I'm now getting close to closing the front side of my bezel. Natalie says, never enough purple. I feel like we have a purple enthusiast there. <laughs> All shades of purple or do you have a specific shade that you just love? Kata says, very Perry is not India. Indeed. Indeed. It's 
it's not that colorful, strong impression that you would await from India. I'm actually, I uploaded some pictures from India. So this is this picture. I'm now turning to the backside of the pearl and I'm going to add round 15 seed bits on the back too. So this picture that I took, I took it, this is inside the Chitorgar fort and I was climbing up a little tower and then I spotted the people being together and chatting and wearing these colorful clothes and that's India, that's, that's strong pink and strong yellow and strong blue. And by the way, this is this is a picture from from Wikipedia, and this is Chitorgar Fort. So you have an impression of where the name comes from. And then Nancy says, "I love the very very so I'm sure I will make more in those color choices." And Sandra says. I'm using matte gold, fuchsia, blue, and silver lined matte dyed lilac. So there is some purple. And we have Chantal joining us too. Hello, Chantal. How are you today? I think. Sandra's beadmet must look beautiful with the matte gold and fuchsia and blue. That will look great. The motif can start talk to you and you will see what it wants to be. Or do you already have an idea if you want to make it into a bracelet or earring? A bracelet is actually tricky because the the uh, motif it has 11 points so it's not so straightforward to join the motifs into a bracelet it is possible but it is a bit of a challenge so it's pretty easy to create from this motif a pendant an earring even combine it with some more motifs as a statement earring you can join the motifs into a v-shaped necklace but the bracelet is a bit tricky so i'm curious if some of you will make bracelets <laughs> and just a bit of information about the majestic Chittorgar fort. I have another picture for you. Actually a picture of the tower where we were climbing up from where I took the picture of the people in the beautiful colorful clothing. So the fort is one of the biggest in India and if you would like to walk around it, then you would need to walk 13 kilometers. That's about, I don't know, 16, 17 miles, I think. And it's part of the UNESCO World Heritage. And they started to build it already in the seventh century. And I think that's amazing to like having sometime, something still here, what was initiated in the seventh century. That's just mind blowing. And it's so, so, so beautiful. It's, I have, I have a little detail photo of the carvings of the, of the tower together with some, so it's some mon monkeys. So you can see how, how beautifully carved that tower is. And within that huge fort, like, can you imagine walking 13 kilometers to, to, to circle the fort? There are many, many different buildings, more than 80 buildings, actually, four complete palaces. And 
around 20 temples and complete lakes as you could see on this on this picture from Wikipedia. So it's really a majestic sight to see. And Claire joined us and Cindy. Kata has an idea for the bracelet. She did it. Uh, she did a zigzag bracelet recently for the Zundert motif. And it looked great. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, step six, and I'm now starting out from a Miyuki Delica in the middle row of the bezel. And we call this adding beads in the ditch. So I'm exiting a Miyuki Delica in the middle row. I picked up another Delica and then I bead through the next Miyuki Delica that is in the middle row. So when I pull my thread, then the new bead will sit in the ditch between two delicas. And then I can continue all around, all around, adding 11 beads in the ditch. By the way, ladies, I was really, really happy to see all your starry night jewels. And I promised you that I will have a starry night challenge. And actually, hopefully we can do this with every theme. Let's see. I don't want to make promises yet, but let's see how will we, how will you like it and how will it go? So... I would like to invite you for a little Starry Night Challenge. This week I ordered two books. One of them actually I already knew I had the Hungarian version of it. It is Van Gogh's complete painting book. So in the book there are all the phot uh, photos of all the paintings of Vincent van Gogh for our new beaders. I'm saying, uh, I just want to say that uh, as now we are exploring India on our bead mats, for the past two months we were uh, beading jewels inspired by the starry night, the starry night of Vincent van Gogh. And I would like to invite you for a challenge. So this is one of the books that I have ordered. Yeah, Claire says that's a big book. It's pretty thick. It's heavy. And the other book that I've ordered didn't arrive yet. It's on the way, according to the tracking. And the other book is a complete edition of Vincent's letters that he wrote to his brother and other important people in his life. And as he was a highly empathic, gentle soul, those letters, they are beautiful and of course interesting to see into the mind of one of the biggest artists ever. So the challenge. I will post the exact rules on Monday, but so you can start thinking. Everyone who was a Beating School Academy student for student of Starry Night, for the Starry Night team, I invite you for a little challenge and you can enter with a picture of one jewel that you created in the Starry Night style. However, that jewel cannot be exactly the same as I beaded it, because then since we are working also with the same beads and tutorials, it would be very, very, very hard <laughs> to, to see 
the differences. So there will be two winners. You will have about a month and a half. I will post the rules exactly on Monday to create still something for Starry Night or to submit something that you have created for Starry Night. And one of the winners will be chosen for the letters of Vincent. One of the winners will be chosen randomly during a, uh, during a coffee time with Erica out of a hat, let's say. And the other, the bidder who will win this big edition of the paintings of Vincent, uh, I will post exactly how the how the other winner will be chosen. We have to decide yet, but so you can get started on your creations. <laughs> so I have my beads in the ditch in place from step six, and I repeat the thread pass until I'm exiting one of the beads in the ditch. And let's continue to step seven. So Kata asks, she says, oh, such a great challenge. Does it have to be one of the motifs or any inspiration with maybe other own design? Uh, the more personalized, the better, I would say. <laughs> so if you have your own design or you changed a motif, a bidding school motif somehow, that's wonderful. And everyone will be able, every student will be able to enter with one jewel. So now I'm exiting a bead that I added into the ditch. And in step seven, I am adding groups of three Miyuki Delica beads in between the ditch beads. <laughs> So sometimes I need to adjust them a little bit to help with my fingers so they have a nice V shape. <laughs> Kata says I'm pushing her. <laughs> not at all, not at all, dear beaters. No pressure there. <laughs> So I will be adding in total 11 of those little groups of three. Actually, I told you that this is the small chitorger motif. And the small Chitorgar motif, of course, has a big sister, the big Chitorgar motif. That's what's on the cover of the box. And that's going to be the full version, the big version of it. It's going to be your first tutorial that you will receive for the India team. And as I was beating, was designing this motif, then I was thinking that you could actually stop while beading on so many places that this one tutorial that will come for the big Chitorga or already actually for this small motif, it gives you different possibilities because you could use the pearl on its own. I know that some of you really got into bezeling nacre cabochons and using them as connectors in your jewels. So you could also just leave the pearl with the simple peyote bezel and use it for connecting several motifs in your jewels to create something bigger. 
or actually you could you could uh, finish it after adding this group of three and then it looks like place and those would be also like nice little earrings or connecting pieces between bigger motifs for example or as you can see in step eight we are going to add some round 11 seed beads you could stop after that circle you could stop after step nine so you have many 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 different possibilities and i think it would also look amazing if you wanted to bead a full statement necklace while combining several different sizes of the same motif that for the focal you use the big one and then you add two smaller ones and then you add even smaller and then maybe finish it with pearls like this necklace is finished so many 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 different possibilities and Heike joined us in the meanwhile welcome Heike and Natalie says, with a brown pearl and yellow delicas, this stage would make a pretty sunflower. That's so true, what a good idea. And Vania, actually, one of our regular beaders, she was looking for a sunflower pattern recently. She's really into Anjo. <laughs> and yeah, now we have a sunflower. <laughs> so, and in step eight, and hi, Robina. In step eight, we are starting out by exiting still a bead in the ditch. So we don't bead up at the beginning to the V-shape, the group of three, but we are starting out from a bead in the ditch that we added previously. And we pick up around 11 seed bead and we bead through the next bead in the ditch. So when I pull my thread, then the round 11 seed bead, it will sit in the middle of this little V shape that I created in step seven. And this is how I bead all around the motif, adding all together 11 pieces of round 11 seed beads, always around 11 seed bead in the middle of a little V. So how is it going, dear beaders? Please let me know in a comment. Do you already have two motifs finished because I talk so much and I beat so uh, slow? Do you need any help? Any more explanation about some part? So the round 11s, they are in one line with the round 15s. Any Antoinette is doing great, she says. What kind of colors are you using, Antoinette? Cheryl says, adding my bicons and thinking it's perfect size for a ring. That's also true. I like to tell about all the possibilities, what you can do with it, as many as as I can come up with, but there are always so many more that <laughs> you add during or after the video class. It's, it's really great. Okay. Facebook friend says she's catching up. Okay. And then is using dark green, gold and purple. So, after adding the last round 11 seed bead, I beaded through a delica that was in the ditch, and then I continued through two Meyuki delica beads, the first two out of a group of three. So now I am starting out step nine by exiting a Meyuki delica in the middle of a little V shape. And I can put aside actually my round 11s and round 15s too. And 
I'm getting to the crystals. And in step nine, I will be adding four millimeter Preciosa bicone beads one by one between the middle beads out of a group of three. So I'm exiting the middle bead. I picked up a four millimeter bicone and then I bead through the next delicate that is exactly in the middle of a group of three. Then we have a Facebook user friend using pink, gray and gold. And she is happy with a happy cat face. Is it you, Ula or Sarah? <laughs> or someone else who loves cats. We have lots of cat, cat enthusiasts here. I was supposed to take care of a cat during the Christmas holidays while my friends were supposed to travel. And I was really looking forward to it. Unfortunately, they stayed at home in quarantine and my happy kitty times did not happen. But yeah, sooner or later. <laughs> it's Ula. <laughs> Hi, Ula. Good to see you. Veronka forgot to add the size 11, so now she's blaming her kid. That's not nice. <laughs> oh, Ula, I see your name now. Wonderful. And Chris, hi, Chris. Chris is using the teal blue. I'm really into blue also. turquoise and the blue shades that we used during the past month or two. It's like um, colors represent not only like moods for me, but they can also bring me into a mood. So for me, blue is calm. I think about the blue sky. I think about the ocean and it definitely has a calming effect on me. Of course, it can change day by day that what kind of color do I enjoy working with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so sometimes I'm in a yellow mood when I'm like, yay, energy. Then it's yellow for me. And I don't know if uh, gray, silver, they are like stability. <laughs> and Miriam asks, Erica, you do not add R11 on both sides. No, no, I have the R11s only on one side, but you could actually make it kind of double-sided if you wanted to. This is the back side of it. Thank you, Jennifer. Martina's thread book, I'm so sorry. So this is how it looks like. This is the front with the round 11s. And this is the back. And Facebook user friend says, I really love the motive as it is right now after step nine. I truly had an inclination of stopping after step nine, by the way. But then I, then I felt like adding some more. And by the way, I'm loving my new hand camera. And I hope that you can see the difference. Just so much sparkle and so much sharper, at least on my screen. So, if you let me know if it if it's also like noticeably sharper on your end, then I will be super happy. So I finished, I'm finishing step nine, and I will continue beading until I am exiting the second bicon bead that I have added in this step. 
as I don't like starting a new circle, new step, right after the first bead. And let's see what's next. Step 10, what a surprise. <laughs> Okay, so Sarah and Facebook friend and Antoinette, Honey, okay, Gunnel, Chris also say, say that they see the difference. That's such a relief, ladies. Like, it is an adventure by like finding the right setup, finding, you know, there it's it's a combination of so many factors, the light, the internet the camera, the, your internet, my internet. So, yeah, I'm happy that finally I think I figured it out. <laughs> uh, Jessica misses step eight. Jessica, please download the tutorial, the PDF tutorial from no one has to be the one.com. And then you can go back to step eight or even earlier. Everything that you need, you can uh, you can you can see there. Unfortunately, I'm not be not able to go back with my beading to step eight because I don't. I would not like to frog on screen. <laughs> but you can rewatch either the video or like really open the tutorial, enlarge it on your screen, and yeah. You can go over step eight one more time. And then in step 10, I am again adding groups of three Miyuki Delica beads. So I'm exiting a bicone. I picked up three Miyuki Delica beads and I'm beading through the next bicone bead. And again, when I pull my thread, then I make sure that the beads form a little V shape. And again, I pick up three, I pull my thread through the bicone and I continue. And just quickly, in step eight, by the way, you were adding round 11 seed beads between the beads in the ditch that you have added right after finishing the bezel. You have added a circle of Miyuki Delicas in the ditch, and then you add the round 11s into, uh, in between those, just to quickly. Uh, explain it one more time to, to Jessica. So how is it going with step 10, ladies? Is it coming along nicely? What kind of, what is the color of your bicones? That's the sparkliest part that we have. So, so important that what kind of color do we choose? You're welcome, Jessica. And yeah, be careful actually in this step because if you pull the thread sharply on the edge of the bicons, then you could actually cut your thread on the edge. I consider myself a lucky beater because it doesn't really happen to me, but I see that. My bicons are not sitting exactly nicely and I have to adjust them a bit. So that's a, that's a risky part. And Cheryl says, mine is slightly wobbly at step 10. I'm hoping 11 will stabilize it or I may have to retrace the thread path missing the central delica to balance. Uh, actually, step 11 makes it more stable, but 
mine is mine is pretty sturdy already at step 10 nine and a half where i am nine and three quarters <laughs> so it should be sturdy maybe try to pull your thread a little thread a little bit stronger or go all around one more time cindy says she's using crystal red magma that's a good color veronica is using gold the full arm the full gold John is here. She says, hello, lovelies. I'm just able to stop in and say a quick hello. I hope you are all having a beautiful day. Wishing you a beautiful day too, Joanna. Oh, Kata, Kata has luxurious, beautiful bicons, white opal, two times AB. Oh, I love those. <laughs> and Miriam says, oh, yes, I catched up and very happy with my colors. Fuchsia, turquoise and light gray. <laughs> That sounds great. Anita is also into gray today. <laughs> Ula's changing colors. Pink and pink was too bland. She says now turquoise two times maybe. Turquoise solves everything. <laughs> and is still considering colors. Oh, then we have a Facebook user friend who is using Lightsium AB two times. <laughs> That's also pretty. By the way, uh, ladies, thanks to your generous advent calendar orders in December. Thank you so much. I managed to place a big order with Preciosa before the end of the year. And it was important because they are now raising their prices slightly, sometimes not so slightly. So it depends on the category of product. But I managed to place a big order from Preciosa. Thank you for your support. And there will be lots and lots of new colors coming, mainly for bicone beads. So they are still being pegged. And of course, it takes some time to photograph them, to upload them to the eShop. But I tried to complete or assortment of bicone colors as much as possible. My goal is that we have that you have the full choice of all the simple and opal and matte and AB and two times AB and combination matte AB colors available. So there are lots of new colors coming. And I hope that we will have them like long time that also, when they would be gone, then we would like to restock them and keep as much available as possible. So if you feel like you don't want to splurge right away now, then this is something that we would like to keep in, in our inventory, like for, for the long run. We have lots of stuff that is that once it's gone, then we can't really get more or it's like super complicated. But Preciosa should be something that we that we have. <laughs> and Sarah says, I beat something else today, but, I want, but wanted your company. I am so happy. I am a future student again. I feel so much better now, and I am ready to come back and hang with you, with uh, you ladies in the club. Sarah, thank you for, for also registering again. But most importantly, I hope that it means that you are feeling better. And we are happy to have you back again. Like, uh, I know that you were often like reading co uh, posts and components and uh, looking at the jewels, but I will be super happy if you also share more because we just love your jewels. And thanks for always also your advice to fellow beaters. <laughs> and then step 11, 
then finally everything will click in place and I am starting step 11 uh, by exiting a bicon bead. So exiting a bicon bead and then now I pick up my second color of Miyuki Delica 11s. It's still trying to find the Okay, I don't have the little bag here, but it's the one that comes in your fuchsia box. So I picked up a Miyuki Delica, Delica 11, and then I bead through the next bicon. And again, I pick up a Delica, and I bead through the next bicon. And this is how I bead all around the motif. And um, Cheryl says, I officially will need to move to a bigger place before ordering anything else <laughs> or use some of the stash. I hope you go for that uh, second option and beat up some of your stash. Uh, and Jessica says, go to step eight. It's easier for me doing step eight before step seven. I had the same problem with Autumn now. I'm glad you figured it out for how it works for you personally the best. And Michelle says, I see the Fuchsia subscription is back in stock, but I can't seem to purchase it. Can someone email me and assist me? So Michelle, super good question. Thank you. So today we opened the subscriptions again for those beaders who let us know through an email and who uh, were already members of the academy, yellow or turquoise. So they have a 24 hours head start to upgrade. And then tomorrow, 5 p.m. Central European time. So that is the same time. I don't know if you are in the States or somewhere else, but it's the same time as today when we started the class. And there will be some fuchsia boxes available still. So set your alarm, please. There won't be many. We did our best, but there won't be many. So tomorrow, our usual time, there will be boxes available. And hi, sunshine. <laughs> And then when we send out everything and clean up everything, then, and we have the exact numbers, we always leave like one, two boxes as an extra, just to be sure that we have for everyone who signed up. So tomorrow there will be some boxes and then afterwards when we send out everything then we will summarize the numbers one more time and if there is there are still components left if there are if everyone got a package then we will do our best to pack again And Veronica says I have to admit, I am not a pearl type, but I love this design and I am really looking forward to the bigger motif. This calls for putting them together. Absolutely, I think I'm looking for my bigger motif actually, but I, I don't know where did I put it. I wanted to show, show them to you next to each other, so also to compare the size, but I don't see my big one. Hmm. Cindy says that her motive is not flat. Cindy, did you maybe use Toho beads or did you have Miyuki? That can make a difference. Or if not, then your thread tension. And 
and if you still have like i i uh, i recommend always miyuki because that's how i design and test my patterns okay cindy says she uses both of them then what i what i recommend if a motif is not completely flat that after uh completing a full circle put it down on your bead mat and then gently try to tap on it so then the thread adjusts a little bit and that much thread will slide into the bead as you need or as Ula says you need to sit on it and if it doesn't work eat chocolate and sit on it it was a running joke for the first year <laughs> it works sometimes sit gently <laughs> Mektab likes the motif too. <laughs> I'm glad. So I completed my little chitor gar named after the big fort of India. And I actually have here, I don't have a picture of it, but I have here the motif that we can beat together next week and would you like to see it i hope so mactav says that she used the step 11 at the back as well and then it worked out well for her that it became i suppose sturdier or flatter thank you so much for sharing that idea with us mactav that's super good so <laughs> motif of actually beaded bead of January the 21st 2022 so this time it will be the second time in the whole history of no one has to be the one I think that we will be working on a, on a beaded bead together and I used my beaded bead as a part of an earring this is how it looks like and all the components and all the beads again they come from the fuchsia level beading school academy box for the team jewel of the maharaja and the veranga there is a pearl <laughs> inside <laughs> So the pearl inside the beaded bead, it is a 12 millimeter preciosa pearl in the color pearlescent blue. And I know that my colleagues will be actually adding new colors of 12 millimeter preciosa pearls into the bead shop if you would like uh, some more or if you don't have the box and you would like to get some 12 millimeter pearls. And then we will need three millimeter bicon beads i used blue zircon from preciosa three millimeter fire polished beads check fire polished beads i used the milky aquamarine and then on top and at the bottom of the fire polished beads there are two two round pearls you can actually probably substitute them with size 11 seed beads if needed but i haven't tested it so i don't want to say it's, it works for 100 percent but that might be a good idea if you don't have the true two rounds so these are the ones with this silky silverish whitish shine and then you need seed beads in sizes 11 and 15 round beads around uh, miyuki seed beads and also some size 11 Miyuki Delica beads. And I'm really happy that you like it, ladies. And Cheryl says she doesn't have the 12 millimeter ones. Cheryl, this is actually a technique that you will be able to use also for other sizes. You will have to adjust the number of the beads used, but I will show you a way of like catching the pearl into this net of beads that you can adjust 
easily to accommodate the purse that you have on hand. And Claire wants to make a bracelet out of it. I think it would be gorgeous. Brit Marie uh, is asking true to round, not drugs. So I asked actually uh, one of our uh, bead making partners from the Czech, Czech Republic. He says that sometimes they call them drugs. Sometimes they call them round birds. They are the same. Just some companies call them this way. Some companies call them that way. But uh, there can be a little, little differences in the sizes of two, milli two millimeter fire polished beads and also round beads. And the ones that I have used, they are the real, the true two millimeter ones, which are like really two millimeter ones and not two and a half. <laughs> Miriam says it looks very Indian. I think at the bottom, this little cubic zirconia and crescent pendant charm it it really makes it indian this is something that i have seen so many times there corinne is laughing at cheryl that she 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 will need to move as she promised <laughs> so ladies do you have any questions left we talked about so many things don't forget the starry night challenge i will come with the rules on monday tomorrow i am going to wait for you uh, in the beading school academy lunch break room on zoom you can find the link in the in the virtual classroom of the academy so 7 p.m tomorrow evening i am waiting for you and i can't wait to see you again and if you have any starry night related questions about the tutorials the material whatever comes to your mind then besides our usual friendly chit chat it's also the perfect place and time to ask your questions and I will do my best to answer and as I know the beaters who usually come I know that we will put our heads together and solve any kind of question that might come up and tomorrow so tomorrow lunch break tomorrow 5 p.m we open the academy again a few boxes future boxes will be available and then on tuesday i will be waiting for you at coffee time with erica and thank you so much everyone who decided to join me today it was really fun and i can't wait to see your new jewels i'm really curious how will you combine how will you use the chitorgar motif and yeah, wishing you all the best. Have a peaceful, creative weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.